I had been working as a social worker in Texas for a while. I lived in the countryside in a pretty typical house. It was the cliche Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibe. My job meant that I had to check up on a lot of elderly, poor, disabled people that lived in government-funded housing or apartments in my area. I typically had to check on each case about once a month, but since I had so many different cases, I was out visiting people fairly often. I was always encountering the weirdest people, just like in the movie. Sometimes it made me feel like an outcast. There were a lot of mentally challenged or disabled people that weren't able to work, and I had a soft spot for those types. My mother had a disability that prevented her from working. She was the reason that I'd gotten into this line of work. But a lot of the time, the job was very unsettling. There were very few days where I didn't have to check on someone that really creeped me out. These were the people that made me feel like I was in an asylum. They were usually homeless people or crackheads. It was a rough job. There was this one couple that made me feel especially unsettled. It was this creepy old man and woman. They lived way out in the middle of nowhere, in this really old house that reminded me of a horror movie. Every time I checked on them, I would hear them inside before they even opened the door. They were constantly arguing and throwing stuff at each other. They both got into physical and verbal fights multiple times a day. It was horrible. One night, I paid the couple a visit. I heard the usual stuff from inside. They were fighting again. I expected it, of course, so I tried not to let it bother me. I knocked on the door and prepared myself for dealing with them. But as soon as I knocked, they grew quiet. There was total silence inside. This had never happened before. I knocked again. Still no response. Not a single sound. I was starting to get annoyed because I would have to revisit them the next day if I couldn't get an update from them, and I didn't want to go back there. Plus, I just heard them inside, so I knew they were home. I just wanted to get it over with. I knocked again and tried to talk to them through the door. Hello? I know you're in there. Open the door! Then suddenly, I heard a motor sound coming from inside. It sounded like a lawnmower, but it was coming from right behind the door. I slowly backed away, very confused. Then the door swung open. The old man was standing there holding a chainsaw. He was just staring at me with the chainsaw running. I had no idea what was going on. What are you doing? He raised the chainsaw over his head and started running at me. I got the hell out of there and ran as fast as I could. As I ran, I looked over my shoulder and saw the old man chasing me. He started screaming things at me and told me that he was going to cut me up into pieces. You're going to die! You're going to die! I'm going to cut you up into pieces! Die! 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 I had never been more scared in my life. The man chased me through a crop field nearby until I finally dove into a tall patch of grass and hid from him. I lay there for what felt like an hour, but the man eventually went back home and I got away. The next day, I went back to the house with law enforcement. I was pretty nervous, but I figured I'd be safe with the police there. Plus, I wanted to make sure that couple was dealt with before that crazy man actually did kill someone. The officers and I slowly approached the house, keeping an eye out for the old man. As we got closer, I noticed that the house was still totally silent. There was none of the usual screaming and arguing coming from within. The officers knocked on the door and announced themselves, but they got no response. It was still completely silent inside. They tried again. Police! Open the door! I expected the same silence, but this time the old man responded from behind the door. He told us to leave him and his wife alone and to get off his property. Leave me and my wife alone and get off my property! Sir, this is a mandatory welfare check. Please open the door. No! Get off my property! Sir, if you don't open the door, we will have to break it down. The officers kept arguing with him until the man finally opened the door after they threatened to break it down. The old man was standing there alone. His wife was nowhere to be seen. I asked the man where his wife was, but he didn't answer. He just stared at the floor. The officers decided that this was enough for them to be able to search the house without a warrant, so they went inside. The old man didn't try to stop them. I was still pretty freaked out by everything that was going on, but I had a strong urge to find out where the wife was. The whole situation didn't feel right. I slowly walked into the house after the officers. It didn't take us long to find the answer. There were two garbage bags in the kitchen that looked suspicious, so we checked inside. They were filled with the wife's contents. A bloody chainsaw was found in another room. The old man was arrested immediately. It appeared that he and his wife had gotten into a fight the night before after being heavily under the influence. The police still aren't sure if he killed her on purpose or if it was an accident. Either way, the results were horrific. They ended up quitting my job and moving out of Texas. I'm still traumatized by what happened. I can't hear the sound of a motor without reliving the whole ordeal.
A 60-year-old Ambia man named Edward was arrested on July 3rd of 2022 after deputies found a corpse in his home who was allegedly his girlfriend. According to Indiana State Police, during a welfare check, Edward answered the door and confessed to the tragic incident, which he claims happened over a small physical altercation after being under the influence with his girlfriend. She was then unresponsive. Edward then claims that he didn't want to call 911 because they couldn't do anything to help since she was already quote-unquote gone. This led Edward to take matters into his own hands by using a chainsaw and putting the evidence in garbage bags. Where the hell am I? No, no, no. This has to be a nightmare. This can't be real. Damn it! Why can't I wake up? Please, please, please let me wake up in my bed. I want to go home. No! Why? God, what's going on? place is this? Somebody get me out of here! Please! Someone help me! I don't know what kind of sick joke this is, but it isn't funny! Let me out! Ah! What the hell? Hey, you! Help, help me, please! You gotta get me off this hook! Come on, get over here! If you help me, I'll help you! Just, just please get me down from here! I'll be quiet, I, I swear. I'll do whatever you want. Just please, help me! I can't move! Yes, c come on, hurry! This thing hurts really bad! <sighs> Fine, I'm sorry. I, I just don't know what's going on. Do you? What are you doing? Help me! Do something! I can't get down by myself! Don't just stand there, come on! You gotta be kidding me. Fine, if I stay quiet, will you help me for Christ's sake? Yeah, yeah, keep going. Come on, come on, almost there. Damn! What? Why did you stop? Can't you just leave me a little bit? Holy crap. How long have you been down here? Where even are we? <laughs> Hey, what was that? What's going on? Who's coming?
This story was inspired by an American serial killer named Ed Gein, whose gruesome crimes gained worldwide notoriety and inspired numerous books and horror films. He was also known as the Butcher of Plainfield. Ed's crimes gathered notoriety in 1957, after authorities discovered that he had dug up corpses from local graveyards and had made so-called trophies using their skin and bones. Ed had also confessed to the slaying of two female victims in the past, however police believe it was a lot more than just that. This presentation may contain language and scenes which may be objectionable to certain individuals. Viewer discretion is advised. I hadn't been married for very long, only a couple of years. His name was Rob. It was really great at first. We were in love and our lives were simple. We weren't wealthy by any standards, but neither of us minded. We lived together in a trailer and that was plenty of space for us. Rob was a war veteran so we got some money from his pension every month. The rest of our income came from Rob's business. He worked in a taxidermy shop that was right behind our trailer. That was the part about our relationship that I hated, even in the beginning. I hated that he had to work in that shop. He always worked with this chainsaw that he'd used to butcher the animals and I found it completely disgusting. Rob loved it though. He'd even hunt with it most of the time. Even though the other guys working there would use guns and other more normal methods, he refused. He always said that a chainsaw was all he needed. All of it really grossed me out. I hated the idea of him hunting deer with that thing. Plus, since our trailer was so close to the shop, I would hear the chainsaw running all the time while he butchered the animals that he had caught. One time I had visited him at work, but I couldn't handle all of the dead carcasses lying all over the place. They were everywhere. I never went back to that shop after that. Of course, there was still a smell of dead animals outside a lot of the time. It was all pretty scary, but it came with the territory, and it did have its perks too. Rob would often bring home venison for dinner, which was always delicious. It saved us money too, since we never really had to buy meat. After a time, I got used to all of the hunting and everything else that came with his job. As long as he did it outside the house, of course. Still, something about him having a chainsaw was very unsettling to me. Then things became more alarming as time went on. Rob seemed to get weirder and weirder the longer we were married. He also started to get more creepy. There were some days where he wouldn't even talk to me after he came home. But the worst part was his hygiene. When we were first married, he always made sure to clean himself up before he came home. But now he didn't seem to care at all. He would have come home covered in blood and smelling absolutely horrible. It was partly understandable since he was a taxidermist, but I thought that he could have made more of an effort to be clean around me. I started to have some doubts about being with him, but I felt stuck. I really wanted to make the marriage work. Rob didn't seem to share my feelings though. He just grew more gaunt and weird as each day passed. We started to not get along anymore. It was subtle at first, but then we began having full out fights with each other. 
I would complain about him coming home all filthy and he would tell me to mind my own business. We started yelling at each other on a regular basis. One day, we had an especially bad fight. Rob had come home very late and was filthy as usual. I hadn't even said anything before he started yelling at me saying that I didn't support him enough. I tried to reason with him, but he was practically manic. What do you want me to do? Quit my job? I provide everything for you! I decided that I'd step out and visit my relatives for the weekend. I figured that we could both use some space for a few days. I had only been there for a few hours when I decided that I would go back that night. I didn't want to give Rob an opportunity to cheat on me. I headed back to the trailer pretty late. It was totally dark outside and awfully quiet. I tried to make as little noise as possible. After opening the door as slowly as I could to prevent it from squeaking. I decided not to turn on the lights in case Rob was asleep. I tiptoed to the washroom so that I could brush my teeth before going to bed. I figured it would be okay to turn on the lights in there so I clicked them on and started to grab my toothbrush. I noticed something out of the corner of my eye, so I turned around to see what it was. But when I turned around, I saw the scariest thing ever. There was a fully grown deer just laying there in the bathtub. It was hacked up and severed all over the place, but somehow still alive. It started screaming at the sight of me. I was terrified. I ran out of the trailer as fast as I could. As I did, I saw Rob sitting on the couch in the dark, smiling like some psycho. I filed for divorce the next day. I later found out that Rob had lied to me about being a war veteran. He had never even been in the military. Also, much to my horror, he had been accused of killing two civilians in the past with a chainsaw. Somehow he had never been convicted, but there was no doubt in my mind that he had done it. I'm grateful that I had the instinct to divorce him. I always felt uneasy about the chainsaw. Now I realize that I could have ended up just like those two other victims. To this day, every time a new Chainsaw Massacre movie comes out, I'm reminded of Rob and everything that happened. I can't help but feel that the movies are about him. It's been a popular online conspiracy that a man named Robert Cleason was the inspiration behind the Texas Chainsaw Massacre films. The animation pretty much sums up Robert's horrific acts carried out through the years in a nutshell. The image of Robert can be seen below. Here are the images of his two male victims. It just so happened that their fates were carried out in Austin, Texas, similar to the TCM movies, which is why fans believe the franchise was inspired by this downright disturbing case. 